However, it's a janitor here, and I'm just gonna, you know, rant about wrestling. So anyway, here we go. First off, uh, if you don't know, the janitor here is a big wrestling fan. If you didn't guess, you know, by the the fact that the central belt that currently remains undefended in the run because I'm just not sure what to do with it, it is actually a replica of the WWE Intercontinental Championship belt. Definitely, uh, I don't know if you can really have a favourite championship belt, but I guess I guess it is my fa cha favourite championship belt. I like the look, and also like the, you know, the fact that it is a mid card title, and it's meant to be the gateway for people to become bigger stars. You know, guys like Jericho, uh, oh, loads of guys that have won it. Uh, right now, Cody Rhodes has got it. Fame of Booker for it, but more on that later. Actually, that's a matchup that's in the background here right now. But basically, we're going here. This is going to be my rant just about wrestling and stuff. You know, probably do sort of a. A recap of the week before, try and make this a weekly thing, probably do a recap of the weeks before Raw and Smackdown. Uh, if I get to watch some ROH, I'll try and watch some ROH, although it's not really syndicated here, it is quite quite hard to get, get a hold of here. Uh, you have to download it and stuff, and I, you know, if I have the time to do it, I will seek out and do that, but I, mean, I can't, and TNA is on Challenge TV, but TNA is depressing, man. It's They've got so much good talent, and they just waste it on really, really bad booking decisions and, and really, really bad storylines. Now, I know what you're thinking, CG, CG, wrestle scripted, that stuff doesn't care, right? Right, first, the, the main idea of wrestling, I know it's scripted and I know it's fake, but you're supposed to this is be able to suspend your disbelief, you know? It's supposed to make you think, did that really happen? And although we know that, you know, the matches are scripted, you know, people still get hurt and stuff, it's still entertaining to watch, and there is still, you know, a sort of logic behind things that I'll try and get behind and I'll try and discuss as well. You know, the logic behind booking and some of the, the insane mistakes that people make and, you know, that the writers in the WWE make and create make that just, oh, they do something so wrong and some of them are just really, really annoying. Like, uh, basic, basic things that just look crap. Like, uh, this week's Raw is a really good example. I'll probably go over Raw. Ah, but yeah. I'll go over this week's Raw and then I'll preview this week's SmackDown. So basically, I don't know, I stayed up to watch WWE Raw because, you know, there was the, uh, you know, the 2nd of January, the end is coming promos and stuff that were going on and really, you know, we were all interested to see what return it is. There was massive speculation for Chris Jericho or The Undertaker or uh, some people were even saying Skip Sheffield or Bro This Clay. I, of course, was thinking Big Daddy V or Dio Brown, but I was clearly proven wrong there. Uh, guide, actually. But anyway, so Raw opened with, uh, what was it? Raw opened uh, John Cena calling out Kane. I can't even mind if this is the order, but this is all stuff I remember. Got all written down here. John Cena calling out Kane, you know, not really doing anything <laughs> to really push this feud. Just saying, oh, the bigger monster, oh, I'm gonna get in the ring, I'm gonna face you, and then Kane saying that you're gonna be all alone and you're gonna, you're gonna embrace the hate and stuff, man. This. This Kane storyline here, I mean, it's cool seeing Kane back with the mask, right? Kane back with the mask is a good look, and he is, you know, it does have the air of the monster around him, but I don't know, I just think that the the sort of light side, dark side, Star Wars style uh, feud that he's got going on, Emperor Kane and uh, John Skywalker going on here, trying to convert him to the dark side, it's just... It's just not really working. I'm hoping that they move on from this. Hopefully Kane will move on to a better programme. Hopefully uh, John Cena will move on to, you know, something better. I th I'd like to think this is uh, this is him, you know. He will embrace the hate and become a heel for the uh, John Cena Rock matchup at WrestleMania, which is coming up. But unfortunately, you know, it really doesn't seem to do that. You know, there's been a few things in the past where John Cena's looked where he could do things for himself. You know, he could be a complete heel and a bastard and stuff, but then he doesn't, like... Given up his uh, WWE title shot at TLC to give Zack Ryder another title match, right? If you were to push him as a heel in this match, I'm sure you want him to say no. Sorry, man. You know, don't 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 make him you know tell me you know f off and stuff. But just subtly, you know, just t just let him know. No, man, come on. I've got my career to think about too. But you know, he does the nice guy thing and he gives Zack Ryder another shot. He winning the US title, so you know things like that. And it's just not really, you know really coming towards John Cena even thinking that. I mean he still seems to embrace the the love and the hate of the fans. He's not he's not shown they've not done any sort of story where it's shown them get to him, which is how I would have booked this. Basically how I'd be doing it is, you know, a gradual turn, you know. Maybe John Cena, you know you know, still being a face, but then, you know, when other faces are in trouble it seems like the ideal turning point would be, you know, Zack Ryder in trouble against Kate getting beat up by Kane and him, you know, not going for the match, you know, saving himself to fight Kane, but, eh, what are you going to do? So anyway, and then we opened with, uh, next was, uh, they had uh, Daniel Bryan versus uh, Cody Rhodes, so the, it was a 
to be the uh, World Heavyweight Championship versus the Intercontinental Championship match. The thing is, right, you want to push your World Heavyweight Champion as a lot better than the IC Champion. And, you know, this was a really close matchup, so I suppose they are pushing Cody Rhodes, giving Cody Rhodes a, a really, really, you know, solid look. You know, which is what, what you really want to do heading into the Royal Rumble. Of course, Royal Rumble is a couple of weeks away. And what you really want to do is you want to, you want to create an air of ambiguity as to guessing who the uh, who could win the Royal Rumble. Because I've guessed it quite a few times coming into it just because they push some guys really strongly and some guys not. So, you know, Cody Rhodes is definitely up there as someone who could win the uh, Royal Rumble. Going up against Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, of course, has got his... Uh, World Heavyweight title match against uh, Big Show on uh, SmackDown this week. I have read the spoilers and that is a don't really spoil it for anybody, but it takes a good twist there. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. I mean, they're really they're really struggling to do something with Daniel Bryan. I mean, right now all he's really done is you know save the Big Show from a few sticky situations, but he's not really you know proven himself as a as a credible champion yet. He's not won any big matches, pulled off any big upsets or anything like that. So really, there's not much that they can do with him right now apart from you know something big which is what happens ne- which happens in Smackdown so really you got to watch this and of course Cody Rhodes has got his cup match with Booker T that is the match that's on right now uh, for WWE 12 predicting it uh, hopefully it'll predict it right although I know that it might not you know I mean there are some cool things I mean with that feud but I'll talk about Smackdown a bit later so anyway what else did we have we had uh, Wade Barrett coming out and squashing Santino Morella uh, Wade Barrett, an our strong contender for someone to win the uh, Royal Rumble. He's just come off of injuring. Uh, he's just come off of injuring uh, Randy Orton, and basically, you know, he's on a he's on a big roll here, and he could really, really do something with this to make him seem like you know a real badass. But his promo sort of dropped the ball. He never said anything really, you know, forceful like I'm going to win the Rumble. I'm going to you know, muck everything up, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the dominant force, he never really pushed this Barrett Barrage thing that he's been pushing the past few weeks, and that, that was sort of a letdown, I mean, he could have done a whole lot here, saying a whole lot, pushing himself, you know, guys like Seamus, Seamus pushed himself on SmackDown a lot as someone to win the Royal Rumble, and Seamus is another one of my favourites, but outside of this match, you know, it was just a standard uh, Wade Barrett comes in, slams uh, Santino a few times and kills him, but speaking of Seamus, in the next match with Seamus versus The Miz, The Miz is another person who is probably going to be, you know, the next person to come up against uh, CM Punk coming up to uh, WrestleMania. Uh, if not, he's definitely another one of our picks for winning the Royal Rumble. Uh, Miz and Sheamus. Uh, Sheamus and our one, but didn't really do much for Sheamus. You know, he got taken out quite early in the match, and it was the return of our truth that was more that was more interesting here. Our truth came back, cut a hilarious sort of promo involving the, uh, you know, talking to the invisible little Jimmy that he always talks to, which was really really cool. And, you know, the, the really managing to transition the crazy sort of art truth that we've had the past few months into our face. And and to be honest, that that's quite good. Although really it does lend himself to being a, a heel character. You know, him being on side with the little Jimmy's now, that could be that could be some hilarious, you know, stuff coming on. Of course. You never know. You never know how this is. Of course it's WWE, you've got to take everything, you know, with that that air that you could be disappointed that they could let you down because nine times in ten they do and that they, they drop the ball with everything as you saw with CM Punk they really dropped the ball with the after the CM Punk promo he lost all he's still the champion and he's still producing good matches but the quality of you know the feuds building up to this sort of stuff taking the belt off and putting it on Del Rio stuff like that uh, they really really dropped the ball with him and it kind of you know, kind of lost some of the luster of the feud. I mean, especially after the great promo, you know, the the shoot promo that he cut, the one that everybody was, you know, the one that really caused the suspension of disbelief. Did he say that? Did he Did he mean to say that? Didn't he mean to say that? You know, that one? Yeah. yeah I just think, you know, they could have they could have done a whole lot more with it. But, yeah, yeah they're, they're seem to be picking it up now with this uh, feud with John Laurinaitis. But basically, going back to Seamus Miz, uh, Seamus, Seamus looking a bit weaker, unfortunately, getting taken out by, oh, coming in and destroying Miz afterwards, but getting knocked down enough for an Archer interference that early on really didn't help the way Seamus looked walking in the Rumble, and that's that's not good for someone else that is, he's my pick to win the Royal Rumble, my outright pick, but if there's anybody else he's coming up next that could win the Royal Rumble is uh, Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler was taken on CM Punk in the, uh, the WWE Championship match. It was a really solid back and forth action. It was a solid Dolph Ziggler match, a solid CM Punk match. Both guys doing what they do best in the ring. Really, really intense, really uh, fast paced, good looking matchup. Uh, the ending was a bit weird though. Uh, Dolph Ziggler wanting the count out 
I mean, you know, if I was in that position, I would I wouldn't be I wouldn't be taking the count out loss because you know the belt doesn't change hands and count out. But I suppose it does give Dolph Ziggler more momentum in pushing them to the main event status, which is what what they really want from him. Dolph Ziggler is someone who's been lagging in the sort of upper mid card, but never really had the chance to do anything so far. Really, he's uh he beats everybody that's that you could deem below him in the roster, but there's that upper tier that just always consistently beats him, and this is him probably breaking through that ceiling now and maybe becoming a more uh, threatening main event player, which is, he's another guy that will need to rely on the 2012 as the pool of older guys starts to dwindle, you know, Triple H could be bowing out soon, Undertaker's probably bowing out soon, so you need a more solid crop of main eventers, you know, like CM Punk, um, like some, like Del Rio, like some of the other guys have got up and coming, like Miz and Sheamus, to really be the top tier for the next couple of years, so hopefully this is Ziggler's push and he, he won by count out, so now he's got a match at the Royal Rumble, so he's probably not going to be in the Rumble now, because the... The, t the championship match contenders don't generally tend to be in Royal Rumble, but you never know. So I'd hope I'd hope he'd be one of the ones that are contender for Royal Rumble. But if not, you're definitely going to see him in this match and in the Elimination Chamber match. So uh, who knows? But definitely, a so it was a solid match. The ending was a bit weird, as I said. The uh, Ziggler really wanting that count out win. Really, I didn't think of that. Especially Vicky Guerrero was well cheering for him, the referee, to count faster. Not something I really got, but we got to do. Bella Twins versus Kelly Kelly and Eve. Nobody really gives a crap about that. It's a Divas match and it's not really good to... But here we go. So the uh, the one two twelve videos came up, you know. The ominous promos of gloom and doom. Change is coming, you know. There's going to be a change of no changing the guard. There's going to be something different happening, you know. Shit is going to go down, sort of stuff. And it seems dark and ominous, you know. And then out comes glowing bright blue. And... For, for like seven minutes not doing anything uh, Chris Jericho comes out now I'm a huge fan of Chris Jericho he's one of one of my favourite performers you know he manages to, to keep his character evolving you know he was Y2J and then he was the, the Jericho that called everybody out you know the, the Jericho that the heel Jericho we had of recent and he came out here and he was just you know all smiles all, all happy and he never done anything he never said anything he was just out hamming up to the crowd and to be honest that didn't sit well with me I was hoping that we were going to get some sort of you know he's come back to challenge CM Punk's claim to be the best in the world you know uh, Chris Jericho's also said that but no 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 he just stood there so so we're going to have to wait another week to see what exactly is going to happen here uh, he could have just been trolling us and he's going to come back as face Jericho or something like that That's, that just doesn't sit well with me and then uh but what you gotta do, what you gotta do, and then uh, pff, after that, so really Jericho coming back, but bleh, after that, after that we had the uh, the the Teddy Long approved six man tag team championship, no six man tag team match involving uh, John Cena, Big Show, and Zack Ryder against Mark Henry, Kane, and Jack Swagger, right? And this is where I'm going to get into you know the the whole psychology of the match and booking that I sort of hinted towards at the start of the video, right? Okay. So we've got John Cena, Big Show, and Zack Ryder, right? A really ominous, you know, big face team right now, okay, right? Uh, and we've got Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, and Kane, right? Probably still a solid, you know. When you match the guys up, it's an even six-man tag team match, right? Now, usually, when somebody is injured or taken out, it's going to be the face, because you want the face to be in peril to make the comeback, to make the, you know, to make them look a hell of a lot better during this match. What happened was the exact opposite. <laughs> what we got was Cade not showing up, thus turning it into a three-on-two handicap match in the faces' favour. So the heels were on the deficit, and and that that that's just you know that that doesn't happen in wrestling. That doesn't create the excitement. That doesn't create the buzz that you want. You know, that's that's the sort of blowout that you want after a big match. You know, like you want all the heels taken out to have the one heel that never gets hit. hit. And, and that's that's when handicap matches like that work, you know, like CM Punk beating all three guys and then going on to face John Laurinaitis, that would have worked, that would have made sense, but this didn't make sense because A, Kane decided to not show up, right, so the, the heels were down 2-3, to three. Mark Henry's injured, so really it's Jack Swagger on his own with an injured Mark Henry against John, against Super Cena, the world's largest af athlete, and the uh, power by the internet US champion Zack Ryder, so really, it was a, it was a, and it was an elimination match as well. But really, it was a. They tried to make it look, you know, competitive, but it was totally a squash, you know, with uh, 
John Cena coming in to eliminate Jack Swagger at the end using the five moves of Doom as he always does and then at the end Kane comes in through the ring <laughs> with Zack Ryder lying in the ring tries to pull him in to the ring and just pulls him down to hell John Cena coming in grabbing at his arms <laughs> pulling him back going no don't go into the ring horns boggle ones under there or some shit it was freaking stupid but it was WWE all over, I suppose. So I suppose the cool effect was, you know, the the power tricks, theatrics of Kane and the Undertaker that they used to do. But right now, it just really didn't fit in this feud with Kane dragging him to hell. I mean, Kane coming out, beating the crap out of uh, Zack Ryder, and uh, beating the crap out of John Cena would have worked. But this whole drag him to hell stuff just really, really didn't work. So really, Raw overall was not not a good show. Not not a fan of this week's Raw. Uh, Jericho failed to deliver, the main event failed to deliver, the Teddy Long approved six man tag team main event just failed to deliver. And well we got the uh the usual the usual wrestling crap that we usually get. So that was raw. Uh as you can see we're we're probably watching the second video now going up, which was the uh the uh the Daniel Bryan Big Show matchup that I've also got recording. So uh, looking forward to uh, SmackDown. We've got uh Booker T versus uh, Cody Rhodes for the IC title. We've got uh, Big Show versus Daniel Bryan for the World Heavyweight Championship. Two hopefully exciting matches, though again, as I've talked about in this past video, WWE can and usually does make silly, silly things. So I've ranted for 60 minutes about Raw. Not much to go on outside then, but hopefully I'll make this more of a more of a feature on Just Chalk TV to uh, have a wrestling sort of talking program. I know quite a few of the guys like wrestling. I know a lot of friends that are wrestling fans as well. So getting them involved would be a really cool idea as well. But you know, thanks very much for taking time to uh, listen and watch. You know, hopefully, hopefully you uh, you have enjoyed this. And please, you know, give me give me some feedback. Let me know how this goes. Also, let me know how the video is. This is me trying to use the uh, Avro Media capture card that I got to uh, you know to see how how things look in HD. Uh, of course, just because I'm doing wrestling doesn't mean I'm abandoning the clean down, doesn't mean I'm abandoning the fighting game stuff, I'm still going to do all of this. Uh, just try, try to force out more content, try to do a few more things, you know, cater to more people and see what happens here, but please, you know, rate, comment, subscribe, let me know how I'm doing, let me know how it was, and please, you know, thanks again for taking the time to watch. I hope I'll be back next week with uh, Raw and Smackdown results, uh, a bit more thoughts on things, and, you know, maybe even a little bit more. You know, so please, you know, watch wrestling really <laughs> but thanks again uh, I'll let this match wrap up and I hope that uh, I'll see you next week uh, catch you all later